My name is Dr. Shayla Shorter. As a scientist and as a person living with lupus, I am passionate about all things related to how the immune system works. The current COVID-19 pandemic has brought a lot of questions to the forefront. What causes COVID-19? Why are some people getting severely ill, but others aren't? And why is lupus getting dragged into this? In this four part series, we will take a look into how scientists answer these types of questions. So pull up a seat and enjoy the class. Welcome to this class on how the immune system fights back. In this class, we'll be learning a lot about how the immune system works. So let's start with some learning objectives. These are questions that I'd like for you to keep in mind. See if you can answer them by the end of this presentation. The immune system is a complex system of cells, tissues, organs, and proteins that work together to keep your body safe from potential threats. The immune system is organized into multiple levels of defense. They can be broadly organized into the exterior defense system and the interior defense system. The exterior defense system is composed of physical barriers like skin, eyelashes, and tears that work to physically separate potential threats from getting into the body. If, however, the exterior system is breached, then the immune cells of the interior system actually come into play. These immune cells are further subdivided into their own systems, the innate system and the adaptive system. Each of these systems have special cells that have very specific functions and methods of eliminating threats. The innate system usually kicks in first, usually within minutes to hours of encountering the potential threat, whereas the adaptive immune cells come in a couple days later. Now, before any immune response gets started, the immune system has to determine the specific level of threat being faced so that the immune system can mount an appropriate response. I would boil it down to two questions. Is what we are facing a component of the body or is it foreign? If the answer is that it's foreign, is this threat safe or dangerous? Now that might sound like a weird sequence of questions, but it's really important to ask both. For instance, if you consider food, when food enters your body, it's technically not a component of your body, so it's foreign. However, it's not dangerous, and your immune system has special mechanisms to tolerate the presence of food particles without deeming it dangerous or mounting an immune response. In contrast, pathogens or viruses, bacterium, or other microorganisms that cause illness are determined to be dangerous by the immune system based on specific signals it receives when encountering pathogens. Innate immune cells have a number of unique ways of eliminating threats. So the first mechanism is phagocytosis. That is the process by which an innate immune cell can engulf a pathogen. Degranulation is the process by which an innate immune cell can release toxic particles called granules to kill potential threats. Lastly, a unique innate immune cell called a neutrophil has a mechanism of eliminating threats that I think is pretty fascinating. Neutrophils can spit out a sticky web of DNA and proteins to capture pathogens that are in the local environment trapping them and essentially marking them for destruction. You can think of it as kind of a Spider-Man technique. Usually, the innate system is really good at mounting an immune response to broad general threats. However, there are times when an immune response requires a much more specialized approach. That's where the adaptive immune system comes in. 
Now, how does the immune response go from the innate immune cells responding to the adaptive immune cells responding? There are a number of ways that this can happen, but one really important component or one really important way of connecting the innate and the adaptive systems is through the use of cytokines, which are small signaling molecules that cells use to communicate with other cells. So essentially, one cell will release cytokines which will bind to the receptor of a target cell that receives that cytokine. The binding of the receptor to the cytokine actually sends signals within the target cell and tells the target cell what to do. An example of a message that a target cell could receive from a cytokine being bound to its receptor is self-destruct proliferate or make clones of itself, or recruit other cells, which is why cytokines are really important for helping innate cells to recruit adaptive immune cells into the immune response. So let's focus on two very important immune cells of the adaptive system, specifically T cells and B cells. The T cell has its own receptor. It recognizes a unique pattern on the pathogen, and then it starts to make lots of clones of itself and is able to release toxic granules that kill an infected cell or otherwise abnormal cell. And that's how T cells can eliminate threats. B cells are similar in that they too have a unique B cell receptor that is specific for a certain pattern expressed by a pathogen. The B cells in responding to that pathogen will make multiple clones of itself and release Y-shaped proteins known as antibodies. These antibodies can go out and essentially trap that particular pathogen and mark it for destruction. Now, one of the really unique things about the adaptive immune system is that after an adaptive immune system responds, there are actually a small subset of T cells and B cells that hang out and remain in the blood. If you take, for example, B cells that have produced antibodies that are specific for the pathogen that was encountered, those B cells have produced antibodies that hang out in the blood. These memory cells actually help protect the body against reinfection. If you consider this graph here, after the first infection, you get a sizable immune response. After the second infection, the memory cells are able to respond quicker and with more power in response to the second infection which is why memory cells can protect you from getting really sick from a reinfection. Now that is a basic overview of how the immune system works generally. Of course, there are unique circumstances where the immune system doesn't quite work this way, and we'll explore some of that in another class. Now let's go back to those learning objectives to see if you can answer those questions. The first question is, what two systems are immune cells organized into? Ah, I think you said that they are organized into the innate and adaptive immune systems. Very good. Now, how about the second question? What is the name of the protein cells use to communicate with each other? Did you say cytokines? If you did, you'd be correct. How about the third question? Which immune cells produce Y-shaped proteins during immune response? That would be B cells. Now, what are those Y-shaped proteins called? Yes, they're called antibodies. Now, the last question, what exactly is immunity? Or what does it mean to be immune? Essentially, it means that you have immune protection that's developed after exposure to an infectious agent. This immune protection will protect the body from subsequent reinfection. 
I hope you've enjoyed this class on how the immune system works. I'll see you next time.